How is it fiscally responsible to favor extending the Bush era tax cuts for everyone at a cost of four trillion more in national debt? If the objective is to grow the economy, the last thing you want to do in the worst recession in the last 60 years is raise taxes on it. And it's especially interesting because Representative Garl has said that he agrees with me that we should make those tax cuts permanent. I'm, I'm pleased to learn that. Uh, that would make him one of the few people in the party he has chosen to run under the banner of who feels that way. Uh, and, and, I, and, I hope, and I hope the Representative Garl, should, should he get to Washington, he would, would do that. It's important. Uh, we should be raising taxes at a time when our nation's economy is a near standstill. Uh, it's incredibly fiscally responsible to do that. What well, our aim is here is not to be green eye shade mechanics, but rather to grow an economy and create a nation. There is also there is also an obligation when you do that to reduce spending, to take on the other side of the ledger. It's what I there will always be demand for more of your money. I can assure you. Uh, and there will always be people who think in Washington, D.C. that they've got a wonderful place to go use that. Uh, I have great confidence in all of you. Uh, had we taken the trillion four dollars in stimulus money, had we taken that and left it in the pockets of ordinary Americans, I cannot tell you precisely how each of you would have chosen to use that. Some of you would have paid down credit card debt. Some of you might have bought a home. Some of you might have gone on vacation. Some of you might have put a pile of burn up the front of your house. Uh, but what I know is this, the decisions that you would have made with that money would have created far more jobs than the jobs that were created in Washington, D.C. And, so, and, and, and so when you ask the question, can we not just get a little more money in Washington, D.C., I tell you no. I have pledged to say no. And I promise you, I, I, I promise you this. We could call the party you now. I'm happy to say no when it comes to higher taxes. I'll say until I can't talk anymore. that they are spending too much, both parties spending far too much, and we need serious leaders who have been in the business world, not folks who are politicians going to Washington, D.C. to fix that very problem. Amen. I'm glad you brought up the issue of taxes, because it is true that we do agree extending these tax cuts in place for now because of the uncertainty that we have in this economic climate. And I think it would be a bad idea right now, while capital markets are frozen, to change our tax structure. But I will tell you that I am the only one on this stage who has actually voted to cut your taxes. It's easy to talk about, but I've actually done that more than 50 times. And I will tell you that my opponent doesn't like to talk a lot about a position that he is in favor of, which is the so-called fair tax. This fair tax, the so-called fair tax, I see we have some supporters in the crowd, that so-called fair tax would put a 30% consumption tax on every purchase in this nation. What, it would, what would it do? It would raise taxes on homeowners, on seniors, on the middle class. In fact, for seniors, it would actually tax them twice, coming and going, because they would pay taxes on the, on the front end of their, uh, their retirement income and pay taxes again when they drew down the money. It would eliminate the home mortgage interest tax deduction, which many of us use and as an incentive to purchase our homes. And actually, it would also hurt Kansas farmers and ranchers. It would increase the operational costs of, of actually like grain and feed and fertilizer and farm equipment, but it wouldn't do anything to actually change the price they get when they sell their goods. So the fact of the matter is, only one of us on this stage has actually practiced fiscal conservatism in public office, and I do not support proposals like my opponent does of this so-called fair tax that would actually do anything but be fair, but raise your taxes based on an ideological, partisan perspective. It is true. I have never voted to reduce your taxes. Uh, I've never held public office before. Uh, now, my business has paid a fair amount of taxes, and, uh, and, and, and I'm happy about that. Um, we, we all have a responsibility to, 
to contribute to the, the, the federal good. Uh, but it's hard work out there. Uh, let me tell you, uh, we've got a federal government that is enormous. And I've not heard Representative Gross speak one minute about any ideas about what we ought to do with respect to taxation. I heard him talk about the fair tax. He grossly misrepresented it. He did it intentionally. districts around the country, and that talking point is being spoken about all around the country. Uh, it's, uh, it's part of the problem. It's part of the national problem that the Democrats have. It's because they can't talk seriously about having lived in the real world and paid taxes. They can talk. They, 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 can, they, can talk. They, they, can, they can talk. They can talk. They can talk an awfully long time about what they've done in Washington, D.C., but they can't talk about the fact Mr. that... Mr. Pompeo, time's up. Thank you. Well, what I believe is that uh, it's very, very important that we actually talk about uh, my opponent's business record because he invokes it quite a bit. But I will tell you that we talked about paying your taxes, but actually, in point of fact, it's, a, it's important to look at the entire business record of my opponent. His company has actually been found to violate a federal law at least 27 times, a fine almost $75,000. And in fact, it was sued 13 times, resulting in more than 1.2 million judgments. And in fact, the company that my opponent was on the board of is actually currently delinquent in property taxes in Reno County. So I think it's more important, it is important that we have a congressman with judgment, but not judgments against them.